Welcome back. Given the relative tight state of volatility in the equity markets, uh, we thought it might be helpful to talk about one of our most widely used technical indicators, the Bollinger Bands. Here we see the black line represents the S&P 500. The red line is a 20 simple moving average. The upper and lower bands represent those Bollinger Bands, which are typically uh, plotted at two standard deviations above and below the 20 simple moving average. Now the yellow histogram bars in the background, that shows us a Bollinger Band percentage. The Bollinger Band percentage very simply is a calculation, uh, the difference between the upper and lower bands. When the upper and lower bands uh, contract, as we've seen April and May of this year, we tend to see the Bollinger Band percentage histogram bars go down. And conversely, when volatility increases, when the width between the upper and lower Bollinger Band increases, we tend to see these histogram bars increase as well. If you're curious about the calculation, uh, the Bollinger Band percentage is calculated as follows. It's essentially the closing price minus the lower band divided by the upper band minus the lower band. That gives us a percentage and we also have the Bollinger Band width which is divided, the difference between the upper and lower band divided by the 20 simple moving average. But essentially, the way we would use this is that when we see the markets in a very tight trading range and we see the Bollinger Band percentage histogram bars are relatively low, let's say at the 60%, 50% level or lower, then we tend to see range-bound markets where traders may adopt a buy low, sell high approach. However, when volatility increases, and that's noted as these histogram bars begin to rise above the 60, 80, even above 100% level, we tend to see the uh, S&P 500, the black line in this case, travel between the 20 simple moving average, a red line, and the upper band, or in a downtrend between the 20 simple moving average and the lower band. But taking a look at the statistics, this is the percentage of the time that we see the Bollinger Bands at a particular uh, width or percentage, so to speak. We can see the histogram bars are the highest around the 80% level. When we see uh, the Bollinger Bands width between, or the Bollinger Band frequency, we should say between the 80 to 85 percentile, the 70 to 75 percentile, and even the 90 to 95 percentile, that's when we tend to see the greatest amount of frequency, meaning the most amount of time that we see the market is when we see the Bollinger Band percentage, uh, usually between 70 to 90, 95 percent. To recap, when we see between 70 to 95% is in this quadrant where we tend to see these yellow histogram bars. And that's typically in a trending market. So point being is that when we see the Bollinger Band percentage uh, between 70 to 90, even a little bit above that, it behooves us to only trade in the same direction as the long-term trend. In this case, very much to the upside. Currently, we have a Bollinger Band percentage with just a little bit above 80, which does indicate we are in a trend to the upside, not necessarily a very strong trend, but there is a trend to the upside. Now, this is the Bollinger Band percentage across with the S&P 500, S&P 500 in white. The Bollinger Band percentage uh, is shown here in black, and we can see that when the trend really does develop, when this white line moves from the 3,900 up to the 4,500 level, notice the behavior of the Bollinger Band percentages. They rise up to around 110%, uh, temporarily fall, but really stay above the 70% level. Conversely, when we see a range-bound market, when we tend to see you know, the market really not make a lot of progress one way or the other, we tend to see the Bollinger Band percentages uh, remain more towards the lower side. Now, if you're curious, the average 20-day performance of the S&P 500 uh, based on the absolute value of the Bollinger Band percentages, we say absolute value because we're not picking a direction. We're not saying whether the S&P 500 went up or down, but rather to the degree that that trend extended. 
and how much of a breakout we can expect. Well, we can see that there's no histogram bars between the 10 to 60% level. That really tells us that there's no such thing or very, very rare occurrences of a stock market breakout or breakdown of any significant amount when we have a Bollinger Band percentage near the 10% to 60% level. Now, of course, there are exceptions to the rule, but we always trade, we try to trade with statistics on our side and the statistics and numbers, the data does suggest that we, when we are in a range bound market and we see the Bollinger Band percentage, again, this is what it looks like. When we see the Bollinger Band percentage between the 10% to 60% level down here, like we saw between April 28th and, for example, you know, mid-May, the market was in a very range bound pattern. And this was confirmed with a very low Bollinger Band percentage. So we can use this to our favor either to anticipate the range bound market to continue or the trending market to continue. Now, as far as breakdowns and breakouts occur, they tend to occur when we see the greatest performance uh, occurs again when we see Bollinger Band percentages above 60%, 60 all the way up to 120%, or when we travel to the negative territory, which means when we see on average a Bollinger Band percentages uh, really do contract and we see negative territory, which is not that common, uh, but certainly is the case as well. Now, speaking of breakouts and breakdowns, we can also consider our look back indicator. This is our calendar look back indicator. This is something we've created ourselves. And it basically counts the number of calendar days that we need to look back in order to determine the strength of the breakout or breakdown. So when we see the market goes to, to a new high. Is it a five-day high? Is it a one-month high? Is it a new, you know, 365-day high? Is it a new yearly high? The, the number of days that we need to look back to see a higher high or a lower low really does tell us the significance of that breakout or breakdown. And the more amount of days we have to look back indicates how significant and how much further the market really could travel. So, for example, we see here the white lines, the S&P 500, the blue histogram bars pointing up shows us the number of days we need to look back in order to see the S&P 500 at a higher high. The red histogram bars show us below the number of days we need to see the S&P 500 at a lower low. What we're looking for is a market to make a new high or new low that is of significance where we would expect a follow through. So, for example, Take a look at the market we saw here, January of 2022. It was very strong indeed. Then the market started to travel down. All of a sudden, we see a breakdown occur, a 70-day low. On January 20th, 2022, the S&P 500 hit a low it had not seen in 70 calendar days, you know, a little over two months. Well, at that point, the S&P 500 was at a level roughly 4,300 in that area, that ended up leading down immediately to a low, uh, much lower down, to be sure, around the 4170 level. We did travel higher, but then the market was able to make a new low, 4123 on, on May the 6th, 2022. That eventually led down to led out to a breakdown, seeing S&P 500 at 3675 June 20th of 2022. Well, more recently, we saw the S&P 500 was really in a trading range. We hit highs of 4180 on February 2nd of this year. All of a sudden, we see May 18th, 2023, 191-day high. At that point, the S&P 500 was at 4192. Well, we say, okay, maybe it was a breakout. What's the big deal? 4192 on May the 19th, all of a sudden, by July 3rd, we saw S&P 500 4466. So we're talking, you know, a relatively short amount of time, maybe 6 weeks or so, 5 or 6 weeks or so, we saw the S&P 500 all of a sudden break out from the 41 and a half level to the 44 and a half, 300 points in the S&P 500 in 5 weeks. And what it's telling us currently, very recently, we saw the S&P 500 at the end of June hit a 313 day high. 
That's when the markets hit highs, uh, roughly a little bit above 4,400 uh, to be sure, 4,456. Now, if you're curious, a very big high was achieved around the 4,800 level. That was January of 2022. Uh, if we do see a high above 4,800, and that's not too far away. It's only a couple hundred points from here. If we do see a higher high from that point of view, uh, certainly we, we could expect much more significant highs uh, in the time to come. Taking a closer look, this is what the stock market looks like right now. S&P 500 just settling off the highs that are on 4447 uh, as of the close today. Just the other day, we hit, again, 315-day highs, actually. And what this is telling us, you know, putting the two indicators together, the Bollinger Band width indicator, which tells us right now it's at the percent, 80 percentile. And the 80 percentile, anything above 60 percent, indicates there's a likelihood of a follow-through and that the trend is your friend, and the market is going up. Now, we also discuss, of course, techn uh, fundamental analysis and you know, the Federal Reserve and bond spreads and all that kind of stuff, and we shouldn't discount that at all. But at the end of the day, the technical analysis really tells us what's happening right now. I don't believe it predicts what will happen, but rather the data gives us an idea. It suggests what's most likely to happen based on historical trends, based on on previous occurrences. And what this is telling us right now is the S&P 500 uh, is trading in a tight trading range. A Bollinger Band uh, percentage is still in the 80 percentile, which indicates that it's most likely you know, to break out or is in the process of breaking out. And that we're hitting highs we haven't seen in 315 calendar days or so. That the trend is your friend, and at least for the near-term future, it does suggest that we're going to go higher. Now, we're going to discuss the VIX of volatility index again in the near-term future. And right now it's very low, but I would also uh, you know, suggest to watch the VIX very closely. If we see the stock market sell off and the VIX really start to rise, that could be indicative of a change in the trend. That hasn't happened yet, and there's very little sign of that happening so far. But with every uptrend, it eventually turns to a downtrend. And we're going to keep a special eye out for any signals of, of that potential uh, event to happen. But for the time being, uh, you know, what we see right now is, is, is that that's what the data suggests, is that you know, stock prices are moving higher uh, with a relatively tight state but trending uh, state of volatility. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.